in Genesis is the breath of life, in Exodus the Passover lamb, in Leviticus our high priest, numbers the fire by night, Deuteronomy he's Moses' voice, in Joshua he is salvation's choice. Judges, lawgiver, in Ruth, the kinsman redeemer. First and second Samuel, a trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's sovereign in Ezra, true and faithful scribe. Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of broken walls and lives. And Esther, he is Mordecai's courage. In Job, the timeless redeemer. In Psalms, he is our morning song. In Proverbs, wisdom's cry. Ecclesiastes, the time and season. In the Song of Solomon, he is the lover's dream. He is, he is, he is. In Isaiah, he is the Prince of Peace. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. In Lamentations, the cry for Israel. Ezekiel, he's the call from sin. And Daniel, the stranger in the fire. In Hosea, he is forever faithful. In Joel, he is the Spirit's power. And Amos, the arms that carry us. In Obadiah, he's the Lord our Savior. In Jonah, he is the great missionary. In Micah, the promise of peace. In Nahum, he is my strength and my shield. In Habakkuk and Zephaniah, he's pleading for revival. In Haggai, he restores the lost heritage. In Zechariah, our fountain. In Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. He is, he is, he In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he is God and Messiah. In the book of Acts, he is the fire from heaven. In Romans, he is the grace of God. In Corinthians, he's the power of love. In Galatians, he is freedom from the curse of sin. Oh, Ephesians, our glorious treasure. Philippians, the servant's heart. In Colossians, he is the Godhead Trinity. Thessalonians, our coming King. In Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, he's our mediator and our faithful pastor. In Hebrews, the everlasting covenant. In James, he's the one who heals the sick. In first and second Peter, he is our shepherd. In John and in Jude, he's the lover coming for his bride. In the revelations, he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is I said, he is, he's the 
the Prince of Peace, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, the Great I Am. He is the Alpha, the Omega, my God, my Savior. He is Jesus Christ, my Lord. And when time, when time will be no more, He is, He is, hallelujah, Woo! thank you Lord, thank you Lord, Woo! thank you Lord. Thank you, Father. <sighs> Hallelujah. Just give me a second. Amen. You want this mic here? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. I'm very honored to be here today. It's Father's Day. It's, it's home. It's the shield. It's my daughter surprised me today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just getting my bearings. I want to go ahead and do this other song for you. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> been singing since I was very young. And it's amazing now that sometimes during the week a song will just drop on me. And it's like I can tell the Lord's trying to like say something, show something. And... uh a few weeks ago before we came to Charleston, that song, I Am Yours, it just it dropped on me. Well, we walked around <clears throat> Orlando for the last week. And as I was walking through those parks, this song just kept out of nowhere coming up. So I want to sing it for you. And just let the Lord minister to you. Go ahead, Brother Daystar. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your light. Day stars shine down on me, let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. And let your words speak through me, show me things I've never seen before.
Lord, I want to be your witness. And you can take what's wrong and make it right. Day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying. They're wounded by the master of deceit. Oh, they've been groping in the darkness haunted by those years of past defeat. Oh, but I see you standing near me and you're shining with compassion in your eyes. And I pray Jesus shine down on me and let your love shine through me in the light shine through me Lord lead me Lord I'll follow I'll follow anywhere you open up the door Let it speak through me and show me things I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be, I want to be a witness. And you can take what's wrong and make it right. Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Jesus, day stars shine down on me. And let your love shine through me in the night. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we were singing the last song because of who you are. And man, that song just takes you to new realms. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, no, I'm good. I've got my own. Thank you, though. <laughs> uh, because of you, because of who you are, and I was thinking, as he is, so are we. You know, it's Father's Day, and um, wow, I mean, there's just so much I could say about my father, about our father, about being a father. But I really felt the Lord said, son, Here's what I want you to tell them today. As a father, my greatest desire is that they would come to me. That's my greatest desire as a father, that my children would come to me. You know, and I thought about the verse that says, and it pleased the father to bruise him. God went through great agony he put Jesus through great agony to redeem you and me to bring us back into the family of God so that we can come anytime just through his name and we have to live aware of that we have to live just not in the the knowledge of that we've got to live in the rhema of that 
We've got to live knowing, you know, there's degrees. There's people out there that are lost today that have never made a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. And they make that decision and they step into the kingdom. But God doesn't want you to stop there. He wants you to keep coming. And the enemy will throw things to try to stop you along the walk, to offend you, to deceive you, to try to change your mind of how you see the Father. Because if He can change how you see the Father, He can change your whole life. We were walking through all those parks this week. And the Lord began asking me a question. And I really didn't understand why he was asking it. But a few days later, I got it. And he said, whose will do you really want? You see, there's so many times that we want something and we feel that we have a right to it. And I felt the Lord saying, release, release those who may have disappointed you and hurted you. Release them because I have something that I want to give you but you can't receive it if you're bound in unforgiveness. See, there's nothing impossible with God. But we have to make... I was walking through one of those lines and the Lord said, Darren, it's really simple. Just tell me, I'm willing, I trust you, now teach me. Think about what can be accomplished in our lives through those six words. I'm willing, I trust you, teach me. Submit ourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. So I'm just trying to tell you this morning, no matter where you're at in your walk with the Lord, if you're way out there, it's real simple. Thy will, not mine, be done. Let's go over, and I'm not going to keep you long this morning, and I really mean that. Matthew chapter 11, if you'll go there with me. You know, we, um, many of you know us, so you know that my mom went home to be with the Lord a few weeks ago and And there's just so much heritage when I stand here in this church. There's Pastor Bob, there's Susan, all of you that are family, my mom and my dad, and all the, the richness of God's wealth of wisdom and love and His Word and His power and His Spirit. So I just want you to know this morning as I'm up here, I'm aware of all that because I'm blessed. And I say that humbly. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have you in my life. I'm blessed to have Pastor Bob in my life. I'm blessed that I have parents that, you know, you as a child, you see, and, we, and as Pastor Bob would say, what comes natural is first and then supernatural. As a child, you don't even really understand the role of your parents in your life until you grow older. It's almost like one of those races uh, that they run in the Olympics where they carry, what's that thing called, a baton? They carry that baton and they run as fast as they can. And they meet up with someone else and they pass that baton. And then that person runs. And I see now that God put my parents in my life for such a time to love me, to cherish me, to nourish me, to 
affirm me, to create an atmosphere in my life to receive God, to open my heart to receive all that God has for me. And now they're in heaven. Deborah nudged me during worship, and she said, that song, Better is One Day in Your Courts, and she said, Mom, better is one day in heaven than like a thousand days on this earth. She was such a trooper. You know, and I don't want to get off track and go on and tell you everything about my mom, but she was. She, she was a trooper and she'd put you to shame because she just, that, that's something that our parents really did instill in us. It's like, you may not be the one that runs the fastest, but don't stop. And you will get knocked down. And you will want to quit. And as just like a child, sometimes we cry for a while. But eventually we've got to wipe the tears off. Get up. You know, I couldn't say this a few years ago. But now I realize, what, what's that one thing the guy said? It's not the fighter who can hit the hardest, it's the one that can take the punch and keep going. And I realize God has toughened me to take some big blows in my life, but to keep going. And I realize now, oh, these are only making me stronger. And I don't want to go into details. I know y'all are videoing, but, but I got some pretty heavy news while I was there on vacation this week. And my friend didn't even want to show it to him. He said, this is, this is going to devastate you and just ruin our vacation. And I thought, well, you know, my, my mother just went home to be with the Lord. I don't know what else could get. And he showed me this thing. And it was my ex-wife is getting engaged. And the devil was like, ha, 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 ha. But can I tell you something? And I don't say that of me. When you lose your home, your job, your wife, you know, Pastor Bob used to say in the 70s, all the teenagers were singing songs like Reduce Me to Love. And he's like, whoa. But I'm going to tell you something. When these things really have been stripped from you, there is like one hand that comes down and you reach onto that hand. Jesus said the storms are going to come, the trials are going to come, but the house is built on the rocks going to stand. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't fear and don't lament over anything that seems lost because as long as you have Jesus, He's going to make sure you cross the finish line and anything that has been stolen has been taken away if you will trust Him and stay in, here's the word for today, alignment if you will stay in alignment with the father what does that mean you've been seated in heavenly places in christ jesus there's really nothing that can take place to you while you're on this earth that can separate you from the love of god so if he really is your anchor and He really is your hope, and He really is your strength. And you say, well, what are you saying? Here's what I'm really trying to tell you. It really doesn't matter all the things that wash away that you can't hold on to, because if you're holding on to Him and aligned with Him, everything that He has bought and paid for you and has meant to be in your life, it will be there when you need it. A lot of us, in our youth, we run after things that we want, that we think we need, that we think we're smart enough to, to, to do. 
And when they won't stand and they won't last, we want to cry and, oh, but I'm past the point of like, oh, God, okay. My plans had to fail. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because you know what God ultimately wants you to do? He wants you free. He wants you free from you. He wants you free from others. We were at the funeral a few weeks ago, and I heard the Lord say, Be bold and be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. And I'm going to tell you, church, all these attacks and all of these fiery darts that try to come against you to push you back, push you back, push you back. They're all just distractions. See, sometimes I feel like I'm getting spiritually smart because the more devastating the news in the natural, it's like a wake-up call in the Spirit. God says, you see, and he doesn't yell at it. He's just like, don't you see? I told you all this was a distraction. It's a distraction. The enemy is trying to distract you. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. He doesn't want you consumed in those things. You know, I really understand now what the disciples meant when they said, it's not good that we should serve tables. We need to spend our time in the Word. Because if we will spend our time in the Word and we will get the mind of Christ, then we can help lead the people. But if we as the leaders don't have the Word and we don't have the mind of Christ and we don't have the fortitude to look at the enemy and say, throw your best. Because we know that you're a defeated foe. Amen. We know your future and we know ours. So, Matthew chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. Verse 27. All things, this is Jesus speaking, are delivered unto me of my Father. I want to be on his side. You don't want to be in lack. You don't want to be in want. I'm telling you, you can't lose by choosing Jesus. I don't care what it looks like in the natural that you have to give up at first. You choose him, and just like they throw that thing out and they anchor on and you hold on, he will pull you to safety through everything. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever, say whomsoever, the Son will reveal him. Now, I can't really fully explain this to you. Some of you will get this. Some of you will just be like, huh? I'm starting to understand that God really knows me better than me. And my thinking has gone from wanting to be in control, wanting to know everything, and even a self-dependency has been taken away because now I'm really beginning to understand there's things that God sees in me that He's put in me that I may not even be aware of yet. He's crazy about me and I can't really tell you why. <laughs> See, we used to... When you, when you flip this thing and you really start taking the focus off of you and then you start beginning to ask questions like, why do you love me so much? 
Why are you so good to me, Lord? What? You start, oh. See, Jesus was here, and we're going to get there in a minute, but Jesus was here, and his whole reason for being here, he said, I'm not here to do my will. I'm here to do the will of him who sent me. When we can align ourselves with that. See, we all want to see. I want to see God move. I, I want to see this. I, he just gave you the key. Every day. Not my will. Open your life. Open your schedule. Open your mind. Open your eyes. I saw there were so many thousands of people I walked by and through this week. And I've got to be honest, a lot of times I felt my spirit reaching out to people. I saw a man walking and his ankle was literally just popped out and he was limping. And I knew that that's the Lord in me wanting. And that's what I'm saying. That's what Jesus wants for us. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about getting free from me, 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 so that we can be, be, be doing the work of the kingdom. It is such a deception that we live worrying about our problems, our needs. That is the number way to live a defeated Christian life. Getting consumed in what's wrong in your life. I mean, my friend showed me that thing. And he looked at me and I said, no, I, I, know, I know, I knew that was coming. That's okay. It's okay. Well, well what are you going to, I don't know. But what, I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> but I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I can tell you, it was about six or seven years ago. You may remember this. It was, it was, as soon as all this took place, boy, I came walking through that door with Abby in my arms. She was just a baby, and I just stumbled into the hot chair. I mean, I was a mess. But I realize now, Jesus was serious when he said, I don't want you to love father, mother, wife, husband, children more than me. Because if you do, you're not even worthy of me. That little that, that verse in one of those chapters where Jesus was in there teaching, and they said, "Hey, your brothers and your sisters and your mother, they're outside, and that they want to talk to you." He said, "My mother and my brothers and my sisters is the one to hear my words and do them." See, he he was so in tune to what the will of the Father was, he couldn't see anything else. And I'm just going to tell you, it's going to disturb your friendships. It's going to disturb your family members. It's going to get under people's skin because they're going to wonder, why don't you care about this anymore? Why don't you care about that? Why are you, why, why, why? Because like Jesus said, why, why were you looking for me? Don't you know I should be about my Father's business? Church, that's where we need to live. Yeah. You know, and I'm sorry I had to lose house, home, family. I'm, you know, I'm sorry I had to lose so many things for God to just kind of begin to get my attention to say, Son, this thing ain't all about you. It's about me, and I do love you, and I want to bless you and, and bring you into all these things. But first and foremost... I created you. I breathe life into you. I know you're in from the beginning. I know every gift and calling and purpose I've placed in you. And if you say that you love me and you want to do my will, you better be serious. Because by saying these things, you've attracted the enemy into your life and he's going to find out if you're serious or not about fulfilling the call of God on your life. 
And it's real simple when we stay under the umbrella of His protection. But immature babes, you know, we're all at different places. Immature babes will say, I want, you know, like my child. Daddy, 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 I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Pull your wallet out, pay for it. I'm not hungry. You know, they, they, they want, they say they want and you give and, and they're on to something else. Same way with God. Are we really? Because I'm going to tell you something. I read a verse this morning. Jesus said, any man that will come after me, I will in no wise cast out. He's basically saying, if you come after me and you're serious, I got room for you. The, wheel, the, the, the fields are white for harvest. If you're serious about this, I got room. I'll put you to work. You may have to lay everything down and follow me. But I, I've got a place for you. But I've just gotten to that place. It's just like, God, because, because Darren doesn't even know this, but there's something in Darren that knows he's never going to truly be happy and fulfilled until he's... And it's in you too. It's not just me. But it, it's a God. God put it there. I, I don't know where it is. I, I hadn't seen it. I, I just know it's just like if you're at the house one night and you're craving something. And she's like, you want? No, I'm just not craving. There, the Spirit craves the fellowship and the love of the Father. And there's something about a son that wants to please the Father. And when we're not pleasing the Father, it's not that He don't love us, but we know that I need to give this thing over to Him. Something He wants to do. And, it, and I'm not speaking just of me. I'm speaking, it's got... What did, you, what did Jesus say? If you're in me, like if my word, kind of like if, if you really are mine, you'll know that. If you're really of me, there's something in you. See, I, I was thinking about this this morning. What, what, is, what is the greatest way we can really show God that we love him? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, but... I want to spend time with you. I fully know who loves me. Those that want to be with me. There, there's no arguing. There, well, I, I, don't, I, didn't quite, I didn't quite understand. No, if you love me, you want to be with me. If you love me, you want to be with me. Now, Jesus, if you love me, you want to be with me. I love you. I did this. No, if you love me, you want to be with me. What did they say of the disciples after he went, went to heaven? And they stood. You remember, they stood before those people and, and they testified. And Jesus even told them that it's, it's, it's okay for you to be as I am because I was persecuted, you'll be persecuted, but don't worry about what you're going to say when you say it, but they'll beat you. And they beat them, they scourged them, and they told them, don't, don't speak no more in this man's name. And they said, they discerned that they weren't learned men, but they had been with Jesus. I ain't the most knowledge, you know... I really didn't come here to impress you. I was on vacation. My friend was like, now what are you going to preach on? I said, I'm not really sure. I just, I just get up there. I just get up there and it's like a radio station. I'm just tuned in Tokyo, you know, just. Thank you, Lord. Let's get over here. So whomsoever the sun will reveal 
And then Jesus said, see, this is the thing. Many are called, few. It's not God that's picking and choosing. Many are called, few are chosen. What does he say right here in verse 28? Come unto me all. Everyone say all. All. That's you. All ye that labor. Don't you hate putting out a lot of energy and getting nowhere? See that? That i got to be honest with you. That's the real trigger that it's been in my life for the last few years. Putting out, putting out, putting out, putting out, giving, giving, giving. And you're just like digging a hole. You ain't getting nowhere. I challenge you and exhort you and encourage you today. Start spending your energy. Racing, rushing, drawing, climbing, seeking, going after Him. Him. But what do we do? Love me, love me, love me, love me. And God's sitting there all the time. I love you. I've made a way for you. I've made provision for you. I sent my, I've already, I, I, I've got this thing figured out from the beginning to the end. I've already sent the Savior. I've already, I'm right, just come. But we in our minds, we think we're smart and we run after things or we run after people or we run after careers or we run after money, whatever it is. And then there are really roads that lead to nowhere. And then you have to stop and come back. And I have, a, I have a father, just like the prodigal son. When he got to the end of himself, oh, you know, the servants got it better than this. I mean, even, even, even the dumbest of us, when we're in pain and we're broke and we've lost everything, we come to our senses. And we can hear Pastor Bob say those all famous words. Son, it's simple. It's not complicated. Come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden. And I, I. I, the God of heaven and earth, I, the one that sits on the throne, I, the Alpha and Omega, I, the great Jehovah, I, the healer, I, Jehovah Jireh, your provider, I am your God, I, the one who will not turn against you, I, the one that am loyal to you, I, the one have created and breathed life to you, I will give you rest. Quit looking for it out there. It's not out there. When he looked at Job and said, Job, were you there when I created the heavens and the earth? No. You weren't there. I mean, it's time to let God be God. Because if we will let God be God, He will heal our homes. He will heal our families. He will heal our finances. He will heal our cities. He will save the lost. But His light and His power and His Word and His Spirit have got to be able to be pushed through the spirits of men and released out to the world. We've had a spiritual bottleneck. The plumbing. Because it's the idea of, oh, we'll just go to church to church that's it we just go to church and if I go see that's where the enemy wants you if I go to church whew, I may I, I live I live there for many a year I went to church I went to church oh little ones I feel like Jesus how long will I tarry with you I don't want you to go to church I want you to be the church be the church. Be, be, be. 
All that are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn, listen, and learn of me. As soon as I read the word learn, do you know what, do you know what, you know what I see? I see Mary and Martha. Learn of me. Uh, Martha, I know, honey, I know. You ever hear on those people and all they want, you know, Pastor Bob told me this years ago, he said, Darren, whenever you counsel people, they're going to want to talk. So you're just going to have to sit down and let them talk. And they're just going to have to let them talk it all out. And sometimes it may take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour or two. And when they're finally done, (laughs) Martha, I know, honey, I know that no one's doing this. And you're doing, I know. But guess what? Mary has chosen And it won't be taken away from her. Kind of, kind of, kind of bleeds over into that revelation of obedience is better than sacrifice. It's like it, there's so many. See, that's that's what's the problem is we're doing so many things that in our minds we think, well, this is good and this is right. And the Lord's like, that's not my mind. That's not my will. And you're wasting and expending all of your energy and your efforts, and you're getting nowhere because you're not truly submitting. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. You're doing your own thing. You're just doing your own thing. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's where we got to start. I'm willing. I trust you. Teach me. But see, it's... Man, it's letting go of a lot of things, but you know what? It was just whole, it was dead weight anyways. It was dead weight anyways. All all these things you've been holding, you know that, that that's that's the, really the the mystery. People look at Bob and Susan, they think, well, how have they not got? They, they found a key. They found a key. They found a key. There's no way you can sit here at 83 years old and be this strong and be this vibrant except if you go with me over to John. Go over here with me to John. I'm going to tell you where to go. Hold up. John chapter 4. We're going to make it. The woman at the well. Do I really need to tell you anymore? Here's a woman that had lived her life, her way, for so long. And honestly, until the day that Jesus interrupted her and came and sat on the well, you want something to drink? You know, she's just going about her, her daily, just... Probably her daily routine. In her mind, she's thinking, I'm doing all the right things. Yeah, I know I've got five husbands or had, but, but I'm, I'm, have you ever heard people say this? Well, I'm just doing what I believe is right. That's, uh, <laughs> that's about as bad as it is what it is. I'm just doing what I believe is right. I can see my dad doing this. I don't know about that one. You better check that one with the word. Now Jacob's well was there. Let's go up to verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. His disciples had gone away to buy meat. And she says to Jesus, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. 
This ain't the way we do it. See? We're so stuck in our way. God comes in with it. Well, this ain't, the, this ain't how we do it at our church. What, what are you doing? Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you're stuck and going nowhere and someone comes to give you instructions, you better listen. You better listen. But he gave her another chance. Jesus answered and said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, and what he's really saying is, darling, you have no discernment. See, I've been around people like that. that, You know, my parents, they just taught you how to, not all the time, but how to act, how to conduct yourself, how, how to be pleasant, how to be respectful. How, you know, I went up to a man of God once, and I said, you know, your, your ministry has blessed me. My mother has played your music to me since I was five years old. I just want to let you know that, that you've made such an impact in my life. And he said, always remember something. The anointing that you respect is the anointing you attract. See, you, the anointing, it was David Ingalls. We were at a Kenneth Hagin meeting. And I knew this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I ran up to him and I said, you don't know me, but I'm just going to tell you, I've been listening to your music since I was five years old. And you have had a great impact on my life. And he said, son, the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. But I'm just saying, can I... We went on vacation and we met three families and made new friends because when you've got, did I even tell you this? We were in line for a ride and a Spanish pastor from Argentina that didn't speak English basically said to me, I perceive God in you. He said that to me. we end up getting, I had my iPhone and we, there's an app for translation and we begin to carry on a conversation. I would speak, he would speak, but he said, before you even said anything, I knew God was in you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't, I was just standing in line. I wouldn't, but I'm just saying there's an awareness and a sensitivity that if we will walk in, you just don't know what God can do and will do for you and through you. That's all I'm saying. If thou knewest the gift of God, verse 10, and who it is. I mean, think about this. This wasn't one of the disciples. This was Jesus. This was Jesus going after a woman that was basically in adultery and wasn't even a Jew. Thou wouldest asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And here she's still, she's still there. The woman saith unto him, Thou hast nothing to draw with. The well's too deep. She's looking totally in the natural. The well's too deep. You've got nothing to draw with. From whence then hast thou that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? See, because I mean, back in those times, Jacob and Joseph, that was the lineage. I mean, those were, those were people that were really highly esteemed. Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Just like the flesh, what it wants, even when it gets it, it's never enough. And that's what God wants to get the church off of is the natural because we keep running after it and eating of it and we're not fulfilled, we're not fulfilled, we're not fulfilled. He wants to get us over onto his word. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never 
Well, that's what I love about God. It's like always and, and forever, eternity, never. I mean, it's always absolutes. That's what I love about God. There's no gray. I have people that have fallen out with me because, Darren, you just see the world in black and white. I do. Black and red, but yeah. I do. It's either the truth or it's a lie. There, there's, a, there's a freedom and a cleansing when we tell all, share all. And I'm not saying all this, but I'm saying like, in me, I've always felt like a release. When I release the truth, you may not like it, you may not like how it comes out, but I'm free. I'm not deceiving you. I'm not out to hurt you. But here it is. I, there was a girl who, I just saw this thing, she was a worship leader, and she was getting really ridiculed for singing about the grace of God and the goodness of God, and people were like, you know, and the Lord spoke to her and said, you're going to have to sing who I am and let the chips fall where they may. And see, that's that thing, as we come closer and closer and closer and closer to him and our eyes are open and we see him and we see his holiness and his goodness and we share it with the world it's really not even ours to judge it's God's Paul said I don't judge myself and that's what I'm saying we need we need to quit being so concerned about all these other things and just get hooked up with God and His Word and His Spirit and let it come forth. Let's do that last song and if you need prayer, come up. But we're going to sing one more song and then Bob, Pastor Bob can pray for the food and we'll dismiss you. Praise, we praise, praise, praise to the one who sin us his son. Praise, we praise, praise in one accord we will praise you O Lord there is no other name above you blessed be your name God of Jacob if you, need to, if you need to come up for prayer, come up. If you need to come to the altar, feel free to do so as, uh, as we sing this last song. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is your name. Yes, come on, stand up. Yes. Praise, we praise, praise. Praise to the one, the one who loved you so much. He sent his only son. We give you praise. We give you praise, praise, praise. And in one accord, forever and ever, we're going to praise you, Lord. Now let there be glory. Let there be honor. Let there be power. Unto the Lord, the Lord our God. Oh, He's the God, the God of Abraham. He's faithful, faithful and true. We cry holy. We cry, holy are you, 
I dare you just to get lost in him this morning. Holy, holy are you. He wants to free you this morning. He's the son of righteousness. He's the lamb, the lamb who was slain. He's the lily of my valley. He is the bright and morning star. He's the beginning and he'll be the ending. He's the everlasting, everlasting Father. You're the God, the God of all glory. Oh, you're my healer and you're the King of kings, my deliverer, my best friend. You're the sweet. Sweetest rose of Sherrod, you're all love, you're all power, Lord, you're merciful and you're mighty, you're the redeemer of all mankind, and he's the lion, the lion of Judah, and he's the ruler of this whole universe, the most high of Zion. He's worthy, He's worthy of our praise. Holy, holy is your name. Holy, holy is your name. Jesus said, out of your belly, out of your belly will flow rivers, rivers of the living water. I'm telling you, there's life, there's health, there's healing, there's salvation, there's provision. God has put it all inside of you. Holy, holy, holy is your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to let you go just a little bit. It's so easy. The other night I was watching TV.